You're just. Thank you for these things, Jesus. Thank you for these things, Jesus. If you're sick in your body, we invite you to come to the front. The elders of the church will pray for you. If you know of someone who's sick in body, or if you know of any other needs in the, connected to you or this church or even outside of this church, we're going to pray for those right now. Please remember to continue to pray for the Padilla family in this season of life, in this season of mourning. Let's also continue to pray for the Blash family and church in this season of, of transition and mourning. And let's also pray for Brother Brennan Reed. He is homesick, but we believe that God can heal him right now. In the name of Jesus, if there's any other needs, why don't we pray for these right now? Jesus, we bring these needs before you as a sign of our faith in you, Jesus, as a sign of our confidence in you, our great God and Savior. Let your healing virtue flow out of this room right now, God. Would you be with Brennan Reed, God? Would you touch him right now? Touch this young man for your glory and your honor. Jesus, would you be with the Padilla family right now and this time, God, and all of the extended friends and family. Would you be a father that brings peace right now, God? Let a peace which passes our understanding be with them, God. Would you walk with them through this valley and this trial right now, Jesus? Jesus, would you be with the Blash family and that church right now? Would you be a hedge of protection about them, God? Would you be a peace and a comfort to them right now, Jesus? God, we also, we also ask that you would have your way again tonight, God. We ask that you would accomplish your will tonight, Jesus. Let your will be accomplished in this service, God. You have prepared something for us tonight, God. Let our hearts and our minds be open and receiving to your word and your moving, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now, why don't we turn our prayer into praise tonight, Christian Growth Center. Why don't we lift our hands and our voices and let's begin to praise God.
thankful for the victory tonight victory is ours in the name of Jesus hallelujah 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 well why don't you just thank him for a few minutes come on we've got time tonight thank you Jesus victory is higher than the enemy is defeated He's defeated, victory is ours, and the enemy is defeated, he's defeated, now you sing it.
Jesus for your victory. Thank you for the victory, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you for your resurrection power. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. We do need to take just a couple minutes tonight. And say a few things. The first thing is from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you to every single one of you who helped in any way, shape, or form with Sister Padilla's memorial service and dinner today. Thank you very much to every single person who helped set up whether at this church or at the Donna Cordova Center, to every single person who helped serve, every person who helped clean up after the dinner and at the church, and also to those of you who helped with the service itself this afternoon, and to those of you who showed up as representatives of Christian Growth Center and also as dear friends of our sister as she went on to her reward. Thank you very, very much. Also, we have a couple of announcements. The first announcement is men's prayer and breakfast is this Saturday morning at 8.30 a.m. We'll begin right here in the sanctuary. And then the breakfast portion will be carried out in the fellowship area when we are done praying. Also, Sister Colleen Carter. Many of you know her. If you do not know her, she is a missionary to the great continent of Africa and several different nations in that continent. She will be here Sunday and she will be speaking to us Sunday night so you don't want to miss that. We'll put it on your calendar right now that I want, I need, I need to be here to hear Sister Carter and the word that God has given her for this church. Also, if you know of anyone who is struggling with addiction, Brother and Sister Montez have picked up the burden of carrying on the Be Free class. And that has started up again. And there, God is already doing great things in that class. So if you know anyone that is looking for a way out, please take the time to connect them with Brother and Sister Montez. And let's get them to the Be Free class. If you're wondering when that is, it is every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m., Right in the hospitality room. Once again, that's every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. It's held in the hospitality room. Now, why don't we all stand? And I'm not going to take long, but I'm going to let you in on a secret. Almost every service, we come to this portion of the service. This, what I'm about to say right now. And I'm going to let you in on a secret from Bishop. What you hear us say is we say, why don't we get out in the aisle and why don't we find somebody we haven't talked to yet and why don't we shake their hand? But I promise you, this is especially when Bishop does this, this is really what Bishop's saying. You ready for the secret? Bishop's saying, Christian Growth Center, why don't we find our guests and why don't we make them feel welcome? So we don't have a lot of guests here tonight, so we're going to practice. That way when Bishop gets back, he's going to be like, man, they got it. Okay, we're going to practice. So why don't you find somebody that you haven't talked to yet this evening? Why don't you shake their hand and let them know you're happy to see them in the house of the Lord tonight? Come on, hurry. Hurry, don't miss your chance.
Amen. Why don't we give God another hand clap of praise as we return to our seats this evening? Oh, come on, Samuel. I know you're still talking. You're still talking. Don't worry. They'll be there after service. Why don't we give God a hand clap of praise? Thank you, Jesus. How many of you can really testify and say that God has been good to you? Come on. Can, can you really testify tonight and say, Jesus, you've been good to me? We're going to enter into a season of giving our tithing and our offerings. So why don't we read this scripture together? Oh, Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Oh, house of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. With faith and joy in your heart, bring your tithing and your offering tonight.
you got him. Are you glad you got him? Everlasting life. Everlasting life. Everlasting life. High five about five people and tell them you got everlasting life. Don't you clap your hands and lift up your voice while you're clapping your hands. If you're glad to be alive tonight, why don't you clap your hands and lift up your voice and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Amen. God is good. I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. And we do have a man of God that is going to come and preach the word of the Lord. And this man... He is a man of authority. Every time he sings or he preaches, he preaches. <laughs> it's with dominion and power and authority. And he's not afraid to stand against the devil. And Brother Mace, we need the in these last days. Men with power and authority and filled with the Holy Ghost. And as he comes to preach, why don't you lift up your hands and lift up your voice and ask God to speak to your heart as Brother Maceo comes to preach the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, yes, I've got it. Say, yes, I've got it. Ooh. I don't know about you, but that's what I'm living this life for. For those of you seasoned saints... How many of you can testify that the longer you live in this world, the more you're sick of it? This world has nothing to offer us. Nothing to offer us. I'm glad Brother Darius mentioned that we're in the last days because while I was standing over there, God spoke to me about the last days. And this isn't part of the message tonight, but... If you can get 2 Timothy chapter 2 up there. Sorry, chapter 3. You know, the Bible says that in the last days that knowledge would be increased. And if you can look back 50 years ago, 100 years ago, we didn't have things like computers. 
and phones. We didn't even have libraries that you can access online. If you wanted to learn, you had to go to a college somewhere. We have all this knowledge and we all have the Bibles on our phone, or at least I hope we all have our Bibles on our phone. So you can access it at any time. But I can guarantee you that with all this availability, that the Word of God is read less now than it was 100 years ago. Second Timothy 3, verse 1 says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. I've never seen more pictures of one person than I see in one day on Instagram. Here, here. Oh, I'm going to eat my lunch here all day long. Lovers of themselves, covetous, boasters, proud. Blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful and unholy, without natural affection. That means man to woman and woman to man. That also means brother to brother and sister to sister. Natural affection. Truth breakers. False accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. The Bible says, from such turn away. We're living in a world today of inclusion and tolerance. Everybody's welcome. Let's not judge anyone that's doing things against the word of God. Let's just accept them. Let's join in with them so that we can become all things to all men, that we might perhaps save some. That's not what that scripture means. Doesn't mean to join them in their sin. Doesn't mean to join them in their wickedness. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. We have many television preachers that are always learning, but they never come to the knowledge of the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. They don't serve the same Jesus that we serve. Their Jesus allows homosexuals to be your pastor. <laughs> Have you noticed that recently God's been drawing a line in the sand and calling us back to the ways of old, not to the past? Not to the way we used to do things at such and such a year, but to the eternal ways of God. His ways transcend time. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And his laws and his word never changes. Praise God. 
you'll open your Bibles to the book of Psalms, chapter 69, verse 24 through 29. You know, I saw a thing on Instagram the other day. It was a question that someone posed, and it said, would you rather have one trillion dollars or be able to spend 10 minutes with Jesus? And I stood there flabbergasted as I read the comments of prominent Christians, prominent Christian artists saying, give me the trillion. I can have eternity to spend with Jesus, but give me the trillion now. <laughs> Do I have anyone that would rather spend time with Jesus than have all the riches of this world? I won't hold you long tonight, but if you'll give me 10 minutes of your time, I believe the Lord has something that he wants us to hear. Psalm 69 verse 24 says, Pour out thine indignation upon them, and let thy wrathful anger take hold of them. Let their habitation be desolate, and let none dwell in their tents. For they persecute him whom thou hast smitten, and they talk to the grief of those whom thou hast wounded. Add iniquity to their iniquity, and let them not come into thy righteousness. Let them be blotted out of the book of the living, and not be written with the righteous. But I am poor and sorrowful. Let thy salvation, O God, set me up on high. And then Titus chapter 1. Titus chapter 1 verse 16. Says they profess that they know God. But in works they deny him. Being abominable and disobedient. And unto every good work reprobate tonight I want to talk about three denials and a death three denials and a death why don't you put your Bibles down and open your heart tonight to the word of the Lord. He wants to call us deeper to him. He wants to renew his relationship with us. God, speak to us tonight. Let us hear your word. Let it be effective. Let it change my heart and change my mind. Oh, you come, Mashat we need you in this very hour, Lord, and we desire to hear from you. Let it be so. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Yesterday morning, I was sitting at a traffic light, and I looked across the intersection, and I saw a FedEx truck. And the man who was driving it all of a sudden fell out of his chair. And the truck started veering across the intersection toward me. And I looked in my rear view mirror, and I saw that there was some room behind me to back up. Thank God, and I backed up out of the way before he hit me. 
And he passed me by, and his truck ran into a light pole. And I pulled over to see how I could help the man. When Jesus heard that John the Baptist was in prison, he didn't go to the prison to free John. But rather, he departed from Galilee and started his ministry and started preaching, saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Then he chose disciples, first Peter, then Andrew, James and John. And he did many wonderful works and many miracles in their presence. And then all the multitudes came. And out of the multitudes, Jesus chose eight other disciples. And he started teaching them the ways of God. Thomas saw Jesus cleanse the leper. Judas saw how Jesus healed the centurion's servant with just a word from across the city. Peter saw Jesus heal his mother-in-law of the fever. Maybe he didn't want that to happen, but he saw it anyway. Philip saw Jesus calm the waters when the storm was rocking the boat. James, the son of Alphaeus, saw Jesus cast demons out of two men and into a herd of swine. Bartholomew saw Jesus heal a man that was sick of the palsy. Matthew saw Jesus heal a woman with an issue of blood that had that issue for 12 years. Andrew saw Jesus raise the ruler's daughter from the dead. Simon Zelotti saw Jesus heal the two blind men. And Judas, the brother of James, saw Jesus heal the dumb man. I know some men like that. But really, he was mute. And I wish some men were like that. James saw Jesus feed the 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish. John saw Jesus walking on the water. Isn't it great when we get to see miracles, when we get to see the great works of God? You know, my dear brother Fabian, years ago, was shot in the head and was this close to death, but God spared his life. How many of you have ever heard of anyone getting shot in the head and living through it? My wife was healed of COVID in early 2020 before they knew it was a pandemic. Without any medication, she was this close to death and God healed her. Brother Salazar, we heard the other night, was healed of COVID, this close to death. He kept me from death when I was 12 years old. When I got hit by that car that was going 50 miles an hour, God kept me from death. How many of you remember a few months ago when Brother Abram was having back problems and God healed him instantly in the middle of service? Or when God brought Sister Anna out of a coma?
Or when we prayed for Brother Westberg and God healed him of blood clots. Or when God delivered many of us from demons. Delivered us from our addictions of drugs and alcohol. That's a miracle. <laughs> but while miracles are wonderful, they're not what make us the children of God. And they are not what gives us staying power. Matthew seven twenty one says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Verse 22 says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name have done many wonderful works. And then will I profess to them, I never knew you. Oh, God, don't let that be said of us. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. Thomas and Peter and Judas all walked with Jesus. They all saw the great works that he did. They heard the very word of God directly out of his mouth. But each one of them had a different experience. Thomas heard Jesus say to the Jews of the temple that if you destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up. And then explained to Thomas and the rest of the disciples that he was talking about his body. That when they kill him, he's going to rise again after three days. But when the rubber met the road and the Savior was dead, Thomas's faith failed him. You see, Jesus appeared to the disciples eight days after he was resurrected, and Thomas wasn't with them. And they were so excited when Thomas got back and said, Thomas, the Lord is alive. We saw him. He came here. And you know what Thomas's response was? Nah, I don't believe it. Unless I see him for myself. Unless I touch the scars in his hand and touch his side. I won't believe it. You see, Thomas denied the resurrection. Thomas denied the words that the Lord had spoken to him. Peter, the first chosen of the disciples, when Jesus told them that he was going to be killed and that he was going to suffer, Peter spoke up and said, No, Lord, that's not going to happen to you. But Jesus turned around and said, Get thee behind me, Satan! For you don't savor the things of God. And Peter could have got offended right there and decided to become the traitor. But he didn't. He humbled himself and took the rebuke. And Jesus told him, the night that this happens and they arrest me, you're going to deny me three times. And once again, Peter said, no, I will not. Even if I die, I will not deny you. And when it all went down and they arrested Jesus and took him to the palace, Peter and John stood afar off and then came close to the courtyard and were standing around the fire. And the people there recognized Peter. And one of them said, hey, aren't you, aren't you one of those disciples? 
Peter said, no, I don't know that man. And someone else said, yeah, 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 I saw you with him. And I know you're, you were with him because your speech betrays you. You see, when you become a believer and a disciple, your speech changes. And Peter was caught, but he was afraid of death. So he denied again. He said, I don't know what you're talking about, lady. I never knew that man. And a third time, someone else came to him and said, yes, you are one of the disciples. And Peter more vehemently said, no, I'm not. I'm not. I don't know him. And he heard the rooster crow. And when he heard that, he remembered that Jesus said, you were going to deny me three times. And he went out and he wept bitterly. Judas, who we now know was the betrayer, when he saw Mary get the alabaster box with the ointment and go to Jesus and anoint his head and anoint his feet and wipe his feet with her hair. Judas was upset. Why? Because he was a thief. He was the treasurer of the group, which meant he kept the money. And so when he saw all of that ointment, which was more than 300 pence in their day. He wanted some of that money and said, Lord, why are you allowing her to do this? We could have sold this and given it to the poor. But once again, Jesus rebuked him like he did Peter. And said, leave her alone. You don't know why she's doing this. This is for my good. This is for my burial. And for all generations, they will speak of this, of the great things she's done here today. And Judas could have got offended. And guess what he did? He became offended with the Lord. And that night he chose to become the betrayer. He met with the high priest and agreed to 30 pieces of silver. And the Bible says from that night on, he sought for a way to betray the Lord. I pray that none of us here seek for opportunities to betray our God. You see, when they were eating the Passover, Jesus told all his disciples that one of them was going to betray him. And one by one, the disciples would come to Jesus and say, Lord, is it me? Am I going to be the one to betray you? You see, they didn't accuse one another. They didn't point fingers at each other. But they had a genuine response to the Lord. That also tells us that any one of them could have been the betrayer. And one of them made the choice to betray the Lord. Jesus said, judge not and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. See, our text says that they profess that they know God, but in their works they deny Him.
when we fool around with the opposite sex or with the same sex, we deny him. When we click on that pornographic picture or video, we deny him. When we go and watch professional sports and miss church and put their posters on our walls, we deny him. When we get sick and we call the doctor before we call Jesus, we deny him. When we talk about our brothers and sisters and cause division among the body, we deny him. When we disobey those that have the rule over us, we deny him. When we smoke and drink and do drugs, we deny him. When we laugh at the dirty jokes or tell the dirty jokes on the job, we deny him. When we dress inappropriately, we deny him. When we watch ungodly things, we deny him. You see, just like the disciples, we're all on this journey together. But we have individual experiences. Judas realized that he was condemned and instantly regretted what he did. But instead of going to God and asking for forgiveness, he returned to his conspirators and tried to return the money and undo what he did. He never gave God a chance to forgive him. He couldn't forgive himself. And he went out and hung himself. When the rooster crowed, and Peter realized that he denied the Lord. The Bible says that he wept bitterly. But Jesus didn't only foretell that Peter would deny him. He also foretold that he would be restored. Luke twenty two thirty one says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Let's stand together. When I opened the door to that FedEx truck, the man was laying upside down. His head was down on the steps on the other side of the truck. He was foaming at the mouth, and his eyes were bloodshot. So I went around to the other side, and I picked him up, and I held him. And I began to call on Jesus. The man wasn't completely conscious. But he was fighting to survive. And his hands would reach out to me. And he would grab my arms and he would grab my shirt and he would grab my head. And he would pull me toward him. He wanted help. And I just kept on holding him and calling on the name of Jesus. And after a few minutes, he came to himself. He still wasn't cognizant of what was going on around him. But he heard me calling on the name of Jesus. And he looked up at me. And when he saw me, 
He started fighting me. He started wrestling me. Doing everything he could to get away from me. In the chaos of what was going on in his life, he couldn't recognize that I was there to help him. And when Jesus finally appeared to Thomas, even though Thomas had doubted him and denied the resurrection, Jesus didn't rebuke him. Jesus said, Thomas, come to me. Look in my hands. Touch me. Handle me. Reach your hand into my side. Feel where they pierced me. And the last denial I want to talk about tonight is yours. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. I wonder if anyone in this house tonight is willing to deny yourself. See, the Bible says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But Jesus said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. Would you come? Does anyone need help tonight? Does anyone deny themselves tonight? The Lord is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. You can come boldly to the throne of grace tonight and receive mercy in the time of need. God is calling us to a deeper place. God is calling us to the old ways. God is calling us to the paths of righteousness. But we've got to deny ourselves. He must. God, I want to be close to you.
tonight let's take this word with us and every day be conscious of what we're doing let's not get caught up in this world
Number one is every day we've got to pray. Every day we've got to pray. You see, prayer is not only for us to talk to God and for God to speak to us, but prayer gives you confidence. Prayer gives you confidence to be the Son of God. So that when you walk through this world, see, Jesus never made a reputation of himself, but he never denied who he was. I said he never denied who he was. And when we walk through this world, don't deny who God has called you to be. Let's be effective every day. Let's be about the will of our Father every day. Everything you do, let it be a conscious decision. And let's not delight our Lord. Let's not deny our Lord. Hallelujah. Love your brother, love your sister tonight. Dismissed in Jesus' name.